Women and our hormones. Way too many jokes, way too many memes about our hormones impacting our moods and why we might be happy one minute and then raging the next. Well, we're here to put a stop to all of that. I want to spend this video talking about how to get happy hormones so your mood is nice and even and no one can comment on you being hormonal, my pet peeve, when they're interacting with you. All right, what's going on with our moods and hormones? Let's break it down. Now remember, when we're getting our cycle, we are sort of balancing between two primary hormones. And yes, there are many other hormones involved, but it's usually the balance of estrogen and progesterone that's determining what's happening with our moods. When estrogen is in the right place, well, serotonin and dopamine also increase and get nice and balanced, making us feel good and not anxious. When progesterone is in the right place, same thing, we feel amazing because again, those neurotransmitters, including serotonin in particular and GABA are balanced. So no anxiety, no depression, none of those things. However, that balance is very delicate. And when we think about a four week cycle, we have differing levels of estrogen and progesterone at each phase of the cycle. So in the first phase of the cycle, which remember day one is the first day that you bleed. So days one through about day 10 or so, we're on a slow rise of estrogen or estradiol. This is the follicular phase. We're feeling pretty good. We're coming out of the slump from just having had our hormone levels drop. Our estrogen's coming back up. We feel happy, we feel good, we are easy to be around. We can have great rational conversations. Well, then ovulation hits, and that looks different for every woman. So somewhere between about day 11 to about day 14 or 15, most women ovulate, which means that estrogen hits a peak, and now progesterone levels are creeping up behind them. That peak works great if your hormones are balanced, but if you are somebody that has estrogen dominance, meaning you're gonna hold on to estrogen and you're gonna store estrogen or you have too much circulating estradiol in your body, well, ovulation's a bitch too, excuse my French. And it will really result in symptoms like breast tenderness, spotting, this is why you might spot in the middle of your cycle, migraines, headaches, and again, a rage or even a depression that peaks just for those couple of days. Again, serotonin and dopamine balance is impacted by this rising estrogen. Now we move past that ovulation cycle. Now estrogen is on its way down, progesterone is on its way up. You are now officially out of the follicular phase, out of the ovulatory phase. You're headed in to the luteal phase, which is now where progesterone is high and estrogen is low. Now initially, for the first few days of this, now if you're on a 28-day cycle, we might be talking about day 16, 17, 18, you're okay. But as you get further in, remember progesterone's high, estrogen's dropping, you feel that discrepancy very profoundly, then you start to have symptoms of anxiety and depression. That worsens as progesterone now starts to come down along with estrogen levels that have already declined. Serotonin, dopamine, they are also reacting to this change in declining hormone levels. That's why many women feel miserable, absolutely miserable, on days about 20 through 28 of their cycle before they actually bleed. This is a hormone low point. This is a valley, guys. And that's why you're just feeling anxious. You might be having heart palps, might be snapping in two seconds at somebody that you love or you work with, might even, in some cases, have PMDD, which can present as very severe depression or even rage. I've had many young women come through and ask me to save their relationships. Their boyfriends or husbands have actually sent them into our practices at Center Spring MD saying, I love you on days one through 10, but after that it's a shit show. So that's what we wanna turn around. We really wanna make sure that ratio of estrogen to progesterone is nicely balanced so that your ratios of serotonin and dopamine are equally balanced. Now, one strategy is to balance your hormones, right? Get into the world of hormone replacement. How do you optimize progesterone? How do you help with estrogen storage? I talk a lot about these different hormone patterns in this video right here. Check it out if you wanna dive into this conversation more from that angle. But what we're gonna to do today is even talk about in the face of fluctuating hormones, which remember is all throughout a woman's life. We're talking 
puberty, teenage, adolescence, going into your 20s, having a baby, ha uh, delivering a baby, going into that postpartum phase, perimenopause, menopause, those are all hormone shifts that I talk about in my latest book, The Hormone Shift. How do we balance our mood so we're just not riding the highs and lows of these hormones, right? One of the ways we can control this is by optimizing our food to really support the hormone fluctuations and the neurotransmitter fluctuations, bringing in the right supplements that also help with serotonin and dopamine balance, and building a lifestyle that supports and accepts and understands that hormones and neurotransmitters are going to shift in all women. So where do we begin? So let's start with food, right? That's an easy thing to control. There's simply things you can add in that are gonna help. One of the things we wanna do are add in serotonin precursors, like a 5-HTP, right? 5-HTP and tryptophan are in the same family. Tryptophan, we know, helps to soothe the nervous system. It actually helps with serotonin regulation, helps with GABA production as well. And one of the ways we can get some of that in are with some of the foods that you see here, in particular bananas and eggs are an excellent source of tryptophan when we're thinking about balancing serotonin. One of my favorites when I'm a little bit like this and I know that my serotonin levels are off is a warm cup of milk or even a slice of turkey. Those also have a lot of tryptophan in it as well. So tryptophan is one way to really help to balance serotonin and dopamine as well. Another way is to get in both your protein and your omega-3 fats, really critical. In fact, a lot of these neurotransmitters are actually made in the gut. This is actually where it begins, more so than up in the brain. So again, foods high in omega-3, including fatty fishes like salmon or tuna, your nuts and your seeds, a great way to get both protein and your healthy fats in to help you balance out both serotonin and dopamine. So as your hormones are going up and down, hopefully the levels of those neurotransmitters are not getting affected as dramatically. Again, these are some of the foods you can bring into your diet if you notice that your mood is truly fluctuating as you're going through your daily cycle, or even if you're in menopause and you're noticing that your mood has been dramatically impacted with the, the decline in estrogen and progesterone. Now, moving on from diet though, remember there are things you can take that are helpful too. You can take omega-3s, right? I usually say two to three grams a day. You can take some of the other supplements too, like vitamin D, which helps mood as well. Theanine, which helps to calm the nervous system down. I'll even prescribe 5-HTP at about 100 to 150 milligrams for patients, as long as they're not, by the way, on other medications, which also helps with serotonin, anxiety, a lot of those types of symptoms as well. And then even again, taking something like Hormone Helper, which is helping you with the fluctuations in the hormones, but also has choline, which supports the neurotransmitters as well. So these are some of the supplements that you can bring into the equation when we're trying to balance the neurotransmitters. Now, in addition to that, food, supplements, there's a whole lifestyle plan, right? When we're trying to manage serotonin and dopamine, we know that exercise really helps you get that serotonin or dopamine hit. We know that deep, consistent sleep also makes a difference with what serotonin and dopamine are going to do. And we know that there are so many modalities, acupuncture, massage, you know, being with community and friends, doing things you love, finding your joy, which continue to give you that dopamine hit, even if your hormones are kind of riding the waves of going up and down. Now, if you've tried all of these things, but you're still having an issue with happy hormones, then you do need hormone balancing. And I talk a lot about hormone balancing and kind of the ways to go about doing that in this video right here. Having said all of that, it is possible to have happy hormones. And it is also possible to shut everyone down when they're saying you're hormonal. But again, we have to be the advocates, right? We have to take charge of this. We have to understand your cycle, track it against your mood, right? That's really important, by the way, guys. If, if you're not tracking your cycle and then understanding where your mood is, then you can't kind of have that aha moment of, oh, you know, in the follicular phase, I'm having issues, or it's actually in the luteal phase that I'm having issues. And really being able to dial into it that way will help you problem solve it and support your body as your body goes through many different hormone shifts over time. 
The conventional answer is typically to give you an anxiety or depression medication. While I'm not anti that, especially for someone really struggling, I don't believe in anyone struggling and, and feeling miserable all day long and, and really having trouble getting through their day. I understand that those are band-aids. They are not getting to the root of what is driving this. And my passion, my commitment to you is really helping you understand the fullest version, the holistic version of what's going on with you. So this is a big important piece of the puzzle. When we're trying to be happy, we're trying to experience joy, we're trying to go up on that emotional vibration scale, right? Up into joy and love and, and positive emotions, but our hormones sometimes drag us down. So this is what you can do and it is actionable. So try it and let me know how it works out for you. All right, don't forget, I post new videos every week. Don't forget to like and subscribe.